Yeah. Hello, I'm Jeff Olin with the Washington County Tea Party. And we seem to have a problem with crony statism in Northwest Arkansas. Um, Washington County will be voting on a tax increase to fund the expansion of Ozark Regional Transit. This, this Thursday, March 8th, 2012, the Washington County Quorum Court will have the third reading of this proposal for a tax increase. And if approved, it will go to the ballot and it will be voted on May 22nd when voter turnout is only about 8%. Now I'll show you crony statism in action. To do that, I'll show you the agencies involved and the cast of characters. We have Ozark Regional Transit, or ORT. Then we have the Northwest Arkansas Community College, or NWAC. Next, we have the Quorum Court, Washington County Quorum Court, which is elected officials conducting county business. Then we have the student organizations from the college, and then 8,500 students that attend this college. We have the buses and their passengers and the bus drivers. And lastly, we have advocates for public transportation, outside organizations. It's an alliance of special interest groups promoting public transportation throughout Northwest Arkansas. I'll show you how ORT broke the rules that they are not to have an opinion on the outcome of this tax proposal knowing that a proposal for a tax increase was to go to the ballot. One of our friends, uh, a resident of Washington County, Ms. Beckerdite, sent a letter to the editor hoping for an alternative to a tax increase. At that time, the word was that ORT was facing about a million dollar shortfall. This resident suggested community alternatives to tax increases. Knowing this was not an easy decision, Ms. Beckerdite suggested that the elected representatives who are best informed about this look at the facts further. As I'll show here, the facts have been skewed by Mr. Pumphrey of ORT. First off, the letter to the editor in reply to Ms. Beckerdite. In this these, are, these documents lying here are all from e emails that we obtained through the Freedom of Information Act. And so these are copies of these emails for uh, purposes that I can show you what's going on here. This letter to the editor had a reply from a Miss Lowe from the college. And this is Mr. a letter from Mr. Pumphrey to her. What this shows is that Mr. Pumphrey and Miss Lowe work together to craft this letter to the editor. And then here's what Mr. Pumphrey wrote to her. This is how we know it. The title of this letter to the editor is called Too Stupid to Vote. And Phil, Mr. Pumphrey, wrote to Mrs. Lowe, this is shorter and I think it will cause it to have a better chance of being published. You are free to go either way you want. I wanted to beat her about the head with a founding father's quote. LOL. So I added it. That's the speaking from the chairman of ORT. So Miss Lowe of NWAC, she sends out a notice about this upcoming tax issue, this ballot issue, to all the students and staff, which is 60, over 60 staff members and then 8,500 students and the student organization and gets that ball rolling. And then she, uh, she states in here, if the tax is not on the ballot, then it will be a lost cause for public transportation in this area. And she goes on to say this, feel free to run off a few to hand out to your students. So she's, she's okay with printing, printing these with the uh, supplies from the college. After this letter is sent out, a staff member from the college, one of the teachers there, replies to this and, and in it she says, the title of it is not feeling the urgency regarding the bus tax. She says, one woman wrote in a letter to the editor, that would be Miss Beckerdite, that when she asked Mr. Pumphrey of ORT 
For an accounting of how the additional funds would be used, they acted offended, as if, she reported, they couldn't believe they would be challenged. I don't know who this woman is. And she may have exaggerated the response, but the dollars are huge. And a plan for how they will be used is a reasonable thing for a citizen who will be paying the tax to ask and expect to be told. Whoever she is, she was made to feel her request was unreasonable and unnecessary, and that is a problem for me. This quarter cent tax we're talking about would be an additional $7 million plus for operations to expand ORT. There's no chance of losing this, we'll later see. There are, excuse me, no chance of losing the funding. So here, Miss Lowe shares what's going on. She shares that letter that she got back from a staff member. She shares that letter and the responses from different people with Mr. Pumphrey of ORT. So they're working together on this matter. And, and what she does at this point is she turns over this issue of campaigning for this tax proposal to the student organization and sends it all through this, this avenue here. And um, Also, it's going to be published on the electronic board and paper boards, and a billboard as well. I did forward the brochures. Okay. Then, Miss Lowe replies. After she gets suggestions from Mr. Pumphrey, the staff member that replied to that letter that was sent out by the professor, she said, um, my imp impression is that Miss Beckerdite has an agenda. And of course Miss Beckerdite has an agenda and that is lower taxes, not having a tax increase all the time. So then she goes on to say that she called Mr. Pumphrey and stated her facts were wrong and sent an editorial he was writing. And so he was writing an editorial as well. And the facts that he states are wrong is that they were not going to be a shortfall, that they are actually okay. Well, he actually did say earlier that they were going to have a shortfall. I had a personal conversation at the February 9th quorum court meeting with Mr. Pumphrey, and I asked him, how is this college related to this tax increase? He says there's no relation in that they would not be affected by this tax. It's a separate agreement that they have transporting the students to the college. And yet all this advertising this whole advertising campaign for the tax is running through the college. So what we have here is Mr. Pumphrey, chairman of ORT. He's orchestrating his agenda. And here he writes, uh, he writes back to uh, Miss Lowe of the college here. He says, most people I have talked to about the article thought Miss Beckerdite was off her rocker and misinformed. I believe that we are in pretty good position and hopefully the crowd will tell the quorum court at the February meeting, we need a better transit system now. Let's quit waiting. And that it needs to have the money to serve more of the urbanized area. And that goes on to say some other details. And then he says, this is just a few talking points to share with your students if you are so inclined. So you see, he gives her ideas to share with the students that may have questions about this tax. Then, this letter goes on to talk about how Ms. Lowe informs Phil that she has sent out the letter and, uh, to 8,500 students, and the student group is uh, going to have a table by the bus stop where they pick up the students. And so they had a table set up for two weeks. 
And then here's some where the misinformation is from Mr. Pumphrey. On January 28th, he sends an email to Ms. Lowe in response to the staff member that uh, was questioning the tax. The extra money above the shortfall is to greatly expand the transit system with more routes. So he's saying there's going to be a shortfall. And then going from a possible loss of about a million dollars to seven million in new funding. Um, we went through all of this plan with the quorum court in three meetings and answered all the questions one year ago. The quorum court has heard this issue before. He wants to be done with it. Ms. Beckerdike called his office. Um, Ms. He says Ms. Beckerdike could have called his office, which she did as a matter of fact, and four of us did meet with him after this point. And then you'll see the message changes after that. Just over a week later, this is where the message changes. On February 8th, one day before the quorum, scheduled quorum court meeting, he writes, there is no danger and it is in bold and underlined in ORT losing funding from cities and counties from either the FTA, Federal Transit Authority, or local communities at this time. It is too early to say anything definitive about a loss of funding from other, from the FTA or local governments. Our funding is definitive through the end of this year and appears through 2013. And this is a must read. Staff members and employees must not make comments to the public about a loss of funding from any source of funding for ORT. No exceptions. The answer should be our funding is stable and no changes are planned. Today we had a driver try and answer the question about a loss of funding and it made a board member very angry because the driver was wrong. Well this is a little late Mr. Pumphrey. The message you've been sending out for as we have here well over five weeks is that you're going to have a reduction in funding. You're telling some people depending on whoever saw this flyer, that they're going to lose their ride. We have flyers over here. This is how the message started. This is for January 12th, which would be the first quorum court meeting, the first reading for this ballot issue. And in this passenger notice, it says, failure of this ballot measure effort will lead to a loss of all fixed routes. Loss of all fixed routes. Did you hear that? Here's a, uh, a request to the bus drivers to get involved, and this is right near that date. It says they're looking for bus drivers to, uh, to work later in the evening so that uh, passengers can exercise their constitutional rights. And after, the, uh, after they bring them to the uh, quorum court meeting, they'll take them back home again. But there's uh, no mention of a loss of, of, of routes. Then, for the second reading, which should be February 9th, it says the most important decision regarding the future of public transit in Northwest Arkansas. Well, they could probably get away with saying that, can't they? This is your last and best chance to advocate for your transit system and better service. That's false. There's going to be another reading. There's going to be a ballot vote in May. This is basically scaring the public, anybody that uses the public transit system. These were, post, were posted, I write here in red, because I went and filmed the Hillcrest Towers, and I interviewed a fellow that takes the bus. And I walked around the towers, and I saw on bulletin boards that they had these things posted with the JPs and how to contact them and what to say and that sort of thing listed on there. And I have photographs of these as well. Special maps were made for each bus route in order to carry this out. It says, Mr. Pumphrey wrote, we need to have flyers made for each individual route, clearly spelling out the options available to customers on those routes on how they can get to the courthouse and how we will give them return rides. Every route is different. This would require a special dialogue to the passengers, special map just for that bus route. This would have taken at least a day for a person that knew what they were doing with the bus service, I'm sure.
Here's a flyer produced by Ozark Regional Transit. I'm going to show you here is all these laying here, nearly all of these. There's one here that was produced by the advocates. But all these flyers that were sent around were actually originated with ORT. And then they sent them to the college via email. Then the college printed some of them, sent them through email to the students, and then once again the students passed them out in the buses. So you can see he figured out a way to go around is not showing the opinion to the passengers. Very convenient, he just had 8,500 students here to do this. Once again, this flyer says, we need to speak up now or lose our ride. That's false. They have a separate agreement with the college. This is a day before the quorum court meeting. They already have announced that they have they can't have an opinion on this sort of thing. But the bus drivers have these petitions that they're carrying around in their buses. That people that cannot attend the quorum court meeting can sign this petition and